So, the changes have been planned very carefully and wisely by the upcoming leaders. September 1, 2013, by John Smallman. A major turning point has been reached as it becomes apparent that the citizens of the industrialized world are not prepared to back the leaders who would take them into yet another senseless, and utterly inappropriate military adventure. Yes, there is suffering and heartbreak in Syria, caused by years of divisive attitudes and policies, and it needs urgent thoughtful and compassionate attention. It does not, however warrant armed intervention from nations whose government leaders believe themselves to be better able to resolve the issues than those who are directly involved, the Syrians themselves. The arrogance that attitude demonstrates is truly mind-blowing. It would also appear that other factors are at work here which no one is talking about, even at governmental levels, because they concern secret agendas that cannot be admitted to. Those who wish to intervene militarily are not too seriously concerned with what is best for the Syrian people. Syria is a country that has been internally divided against itself for a long time in human terms, as are many countries in the Middle East and the self-serving involvement of the Western industrialized nations in the region has not helped the situation. In this new age, peoples of the world are once more seeking self-determination, as is their right. With self-determination, people tend naturally to form smaller social and cultural groups which harmonize far more effectively than large masses, and they are not so inclined to seek to control or manipulate other groups, let alone neighboring nations. The large nations that were formed over the last few centuries are not natural entities. The leaders of large nations do not wish to be aware of, let alone are they desirous of, providing for the needs and wishes of smaller groups of citizens within their boundaries. On the whole these leaders are extremely ambitious men and are chasing power and influence on what they see as the world stage, and have very little interest in the needs or desires of those they were elected to serve. They pander to minorities making promises to them, when elections are impending and their votes are needed, but as you are well aware, very rarely do they even attempt to deliver on those pre-election promises. In any case, on the whole the promises they make are well beyond their power or intent to deliver. The enormous disturbances occurring all across the globe at present, political, economic, religious, social and cultural, are part of the essential changes that the new age is bringing in. The vast majority of humanity is fully in favor of change, recognizing that it is only through enormous recasting of the systems and organizations that presently control and direct the lives of citizens that world peace can be established. The old order, the power elite, those who have always held the reins of power and influence on earth for eons, mainly through inheritance, is losing it and do not like it. In fact the thought of it terrifies them. Consequently their efforts to retain what they consider to be their divine right to power and control become increasingly insane and inept as that power slips from their grasp. It is from the intense fear that this is causing them that the motivation to intervene militarily in Syria is driven, the fight or flight syndrome writ very large. Apart from any other considerations, a military intervention in Syria will distract attention from their ongoing efforts to undo the changes that have been occurring by introducing further laws and legislation to watch over and control their populations, legislation which they justify, as in the past, on the increasing numbers of terrorists whom they claim are planning to attack their cities and kill their citizens. Fortunately, those citizens have awakened to the total unreliability nay the dishonesty of these claims, and refuse to accept them, further undermining the power base to which the elite is addicted and to which it is clinging ferociously as it crumbles beneath them. Changes of enormous significance are in progress, as you can clearly and suddenly see, now that the mainstream news media is no longer able to dismiss or ignore them. The changes have been planned very carefully and wisely by the upcoming leaders, men and women from all over the world who incarnated at this moment in your human history to take on this great task. There have always been wise men and women working behind the scenes on earth to assist in bringing about the changes that are now happening, indeed. There has been a tremendous amount of highly animated discussion and meticulous pre-planning involved in setting the stage for this moment in your history. And now those presently incarnated as humans are coming to the forefront, are coming into view to encourage and advise with great wisdom, compassion, forgiveness, and love those directly involved in bringing all to fruition. 
many new faces are set to appear on the international scene to calm down and pacify those who would rush to war. As they do so, you can all help by adding the weight of your intent to be loving and share love in every moment of your daily lives. Those loving intents that you hold and direct, or allow God to direct on your behalf, are indeed of great weight. They are intensely powerful, although to each one of you individually they may appear of very little significance. So, let go of your doubts about your importance in this massive undertaking that is underway, and re-intensify your determined intent to be loving and to share your love at all times. That is your task, your reason for being embodied humans at this point in your spiritual evolution. No one else can do what you, each individual following her spiritual path can do. The intent that every single one of you holds is essential, and when you awaken you will see why this is so. Every morning as you wake up, and every night as you prepare for sleep, intend to be love, share love, and extend love to all of humanity without exception, and know that God's divine will is being done. You are to awaken into the most marvelous sense, awareness, experience of being infinitely and eternally loved. Without exception all on earth are seeking to be fully loved and fully accepted, and a reality far greater than you could ever have imagined or hoped for is about to unfold around you, bringing you into a state of divine bliss. With so very much love, Saul. Jesus. Everyone you chose to meet on your life path will appear at exactly the right moment. September 2, 2013, by John Smallman. Much attention is being focused on the troubling situation in the Middle East and this is understandable because your compassion flows to those who are suffering there. But do not forget to focus also on being love in action all day every day, while not judging those whom you think are causing those problems, because in truth they too are suffering and are equally deserving of your love and compassion. Only a constant flow of love can resolve that situation, and you who are reading this, chose to be incarnate on earth at this time so that you could send your love to those who are suffering anywhere on earth due to military conflicts, or for any other reason. Suffering is an enormously powerful distraction that tends to draw you deeper into the illusion. It can lead you to forget to make your daily intent to be love in action, while those involved in conflicts are frequently so distracted by their own suffering, and that of loved ones that they find it almost impossible to enter their quiet inner space even for a moment where they can access the spiritual help they so dearly need. Your intent to send love to those who are suffering is very effective and does help them to experience brief moments of peace, despite the intense distractions of their unhappy environment. As you know, the divine energy field in which everything has its eternal existence is composed of love, so that everything that exists is therefore composed of love. The limitations that are the characteristics of the illusion are the result of attempting to live without love separated from it. The power of love is infinite, and by entering the illusion and attempting to separate yourselves from your divine source you effectively reduced the power, the life force available to you enormously. It is as though, using electricity as an analogy, all the immense power flowing out of an earth-based electrical power station was available to you but you chose to reduce it to the level at which it would barely light a lamp. That is why it is in your best interests to wake up. When you do so you will cease to reduce the power level of the love that flows through you constantly, and without which you would not and could not exist, but will allow it to flow without restriction of any kind, and you will then know yourselves as you truly are, beings of immense influence of immense light. Awake and fully conscious you could not even conceive of the way of life that you are experiencing in the illusion. It is truly beyond understanding, and yet you cling to it in fear, unable to conceive of life without it, with many believing that life ends permanently with the laying down of their human bodies. Nothing that God creates dies. Death is an illusory concept merely a move forwards, a progression to a state of being that is way beyond your present severely limited experience of what life means. It is not to be feared. The time at which a human lays down her body is not random. Accidents and illness are experiences on the life path that you planned, and everything that happens to you is part of your own personal plan. That is not apparent to you while embodied, although some of you are rather good at getting an intuitive sense of what your future path entails. The thing to be aware of is that you are each on the path home to reality the state in which love fills you with the infinite power and joy in which you were created, and of which you are fully and eternally aware. 
you are all destined for eternal joy in the eternal presence of God, the loving source of all creation, and your homeward paths have been uniquely and individually tailored for you to encounter precisely the experiences and lessons that you chose, before you incarnated to undergo. Nothing that happens to you is by chance although you may well feel that some of your experiences just had to be accidental because you cannot imagine any other cause. However, once you accept that nothing that happens to you is a chance occurrence, it becomes much easier for you to see and learn the lessons with which your lives present you. And when this happens you will find life flows more easily for you with far less stress. This is because you have effectively made the choice to accept the situations that arise, instead of fighting against them and blaming others, or God. For any misfortunes that befall you. Wherever it is that you are experiencing life on planet Earth, it is where you chose to be for the lessons that you elected to experience and learn. Where you were born, to whom, and where you live are no more chance occurrences than any other events that happen to you. It is impossible for you to understand these reasons while you remain on Earth as humans and utterly impossible for you to make sense of another's life path. You have no need to. If you meet or become aware of someone whom you could help, then do so, it will be one of your lessons. But you do not need to go seeking out people to help. You may certainly choose to do so, but everyone you chose to meet on your human life path, for the lessons that you could learn together or teach each other, will appear at exactly the right moment. Your life paths will always unfold just as planned, the fact that they may displease or delight you does not alter that fact. Pay attention to each moment by living in the now as consistently as you can. Doing that is the most effective way to follow your paths and learn your lessons with the minimum of discomfort. When you created your life paths you built into them all kinds of allowances to enable you to provide for the myriad choices within each and every situation that comes up. Think of all the choices you make moment by moment, choices you could not foresee, and from which you had to therefore provide alternative routes forward. To proceed most efficaciously, trust the path that opens before you and proceed lovingly and compassionately along it. It is the most direct way home. Your loving brother, Jesus